Right, Taliota champs, let's have a look at the Razor Blade 2020 edition. I have the base model here, but yeah, we'll talk about the advanced model as well. And compared to the XPS 15 and MacBook Pro, because the number one question I get is, should I get a Razor Blade or an XPS 15 or a Mac or whatever? Some version of that question. Now, I've already said many times before, I don't think they're in the same class, the same category. One sort of like a gaming laptop, the XPS 15. 15, 17 and MacBook Pro 16 are clearly content creation laptops with the, you know, 16 by 10 display. But seeing as I get asked so much, let's review this Razer and do a bit of a comparison to the XPS 15 and MacBook Pro 16. Now, out of all those gaming laptops, the Razer Blade is the only one that can compare with the XPS 15 or MacBook Pro or even the Surface products in terms of industrial design and how gorgeous it is. It is a beautiful machine high quality it is expensive that's the thing when you buy this sort of premium quality it's going to cost you a lot and i do particularly like the mercury white one that's my favorite but there are a lot of key differences between this and the xps 15 or macbook pro 16. now for specs i have the base model but i'll cover all models here you get the 10th generation cpus you get six core or eight core no i9 don't worry about the i9, it doesn't matter as long as you've got an 8 core option, which you do in the advanced. 16 gigs RAM, upgradable in the base model, so I guess you could put whatever amount of RAM you wanted. But here's the big deal with this this is a gaming laptop at heart, and yes, it can be used for content creation. But what separates it is the graphics options, right? From 1660 Ti all the way up to RTX 2080 Super. That's a Max Q. You can get 2060s, 2070s, everything in between. But the base model, you're going to get up to a 2070 with Max Q. But the advanced model, you can get the 2070 or 2080 Super Max Qs. So when we're talking 2080 Super, that is like serious power. And only probably the XPS 17 or the MacBook Pro 16 with a 5600M could sort of not even really compete. But obviously a 1650 Ti and the XPS 15 is nothing like an RTX 2080. But that's more for gaming, right? When it comes to content creation... There are diminishing returns with that after about a 2060. You can see the weight and thickness there. It's going to be the heaviest and, yeah, probably the thickest because you're comparing it to ultra sleek, you know, slim 15, 16 inch laptops. But for a gaming laptop, that's thin and light, especially the advanced model. With the port situations, you get Thunderbolts on both models. You get USB Type C, SD card reader on the advanced model, which only the XPS 15 has, you know, HDMI. And of course, some USB Type-A ports. Now, when it comes to displays, here's the big difference. This is a gaming laptop, so you can get 300 hertz, 144 hertz displays, full HD. With the Razer, you can also get the 4K OLED. Now, it's 16 by 9. So for me, always 16 by 10 will win for content creation. But for gaming and viewing content, 16 by 9 is better. Also, you get the option of OLED. Whereas with the XPS and the Mac, you do not get OLED options. So a lot of people want that OLED. This is your only option. But all of them are fantastic displays. We know this OLED panel. A lot of laptops have it. It's amazing. When it comes to sound, all of them have really good sound, actually. I'm going to rank them. MacBook Pro, XPS 2nd, Razer 3rd. But all of them have good sound. The Mac is still the king here. And between the XPS, I'd say the XPS is better than the Razer, but the Razer still has great sound, so you're going to be happy with that. Trackpad and keyboard. Well, if you want the cool RGB keyboard, you can only go to Razer. I do prefer the MacBook Pro and XPS 15 keyboard, just for the feel of it. But the Razer keyboard is solid when it comes to trackpad. Number one, Mac by far. And number two, probably the Razer and XPS 3rd. You know, there's a bit of issues with that XPS trackpad. They've been resolved, but yeah, it'd be a close run thing between the Razer and the XPS there. Battery life, well, you can get an 80-watt hour battery with the Razer or 65 watts in the base model I have. That's only good for about three and a half hours. So you want the advanced model if you want the better battery life with the Razer, which will give you, you know, five hours or whatever, depending on your display. Clearly, the MacBook Pro is the better battery life. The XPS 15 second there. The XPS 15 does have good battery life as well. Now, in terms of performance, well, let's have a look at some benchmarks and slap them up there. Now, I have a six-core Razer, so I'll compare it to a six-core XPS 15. And if I compare the two, you can see the Razer wins here in GPU score, playback score. It's going to be faster. It's got faster parts. That's just how it is. 
MacBook Pro is still probably the best for content creation with the XPS 17 will be a bit better. Can't wait to find that out. And that's just because of metal optimization and that 5600 graphics card is really good in the MacBook Pro. Now the 1650 is no slouch in the XPS 15. It's more than enough for any 4K content and there's no problems there. But all of them are going to be good for content creation. No issues there. But if you're a gamer, there's only one choice here. The Razer is the best for gaming. You can game with the other laptops, but they're not meant for gaming, okay? So if you're a gamer, make sure you get the Razer. Now you can upgrade the M.2 SSD and the RAM in the base model Razer. Same with the XPS 15 Mac. You cannot upgrade anything. In terms of noise and heat, the Razer is power limited. 45 watt CPU or 65 watt GPU. That's in creator mode. And in gaming mode, you're going to get 35 watt CPU and 90 watts GPU. So yeah, it's a 230 watt package this Razer, so it's more powerful, but you wouldn't notice it that much because the noise isn't that much more than say the XPS 15 or the MacBook Pro and thermals because it's power limited. The thermals are fine, well in this base model at least. And yeah, it can get hot to touch the Razer. It's a bit hotter than the other ones, but um, there's not that much difference really in that regard. So my conclusion is, if you game a lot and you want the content creation machine, get the Razer. But if you're more into content creation, well, you are now better informed to which one would suit you best. Let me know down there in the comments which one you would choose for your content creation beast. But yeah, this is a good package. I like it. It's beautiful. It's premium. It can be compared to the XPS 15 MacBook Pro and Surface products for industrial design. And it's the one in the gaming segment that I like the design of. Even though it wouldn't be the benchmark king like compared to say the Aero or something like that. It just looks better. It's, it suits me better for the looks of it anyway. So anyway, thank you for watching. Catch you in the next one. Tally ho.